If you have the journal that accompanies this module, you can click Quiz Scores to open the dataset. Here we have, for the 57 students, the scores on Quiz 1 and Quiz 2. The two individuals we most care about are the first two rows, Mary and John, who we're going to be able to look at in the distributions. Let's actually look at the distributions of each of these quizzes. Remember, we can look at the distributions of any variable by using the distribution platform. In this case, I'll take quiz 1 and quiz 2 and cast them into the Y columns. Also, because we don't want to deal with the statistics right now, let's click histograms only so Jump will suppress the statistical output. When I click OK, Jump will return the histograms for both quiz 1 and quiz 2. So that we have a little bit more room to look at these distributions, I'm going to expand the size of the different histograms. Notice we can hover over the bottom right hand side and we get a little arrow that allows us to size each of these histograms. There's one important trick in Jump, especially in platforms like this where you have multiple columns and you want to apply the action you do to the multiple columns in the output. The trick is, hold down the command key if you're on the Mac or control if you're on the PC and then any action you perform on one of these outputs, here I'll drag out the size of Quiz 1, will be broadcast to Quiz 2. Again, the way I'm doing this is holding down the command key before I click and drag, and once I've made the change, I can let go. Broadcasting a command actually works all over the place in Jump. If I hold down the command key and click the gray triangle, notice it'll close or minimize both Quiz 1 and Quiz 2. In Jump's mind, me holding down the command key says, broadcast this command to any other entity in this window that can accept the same command. We'll play with broadcasting commands a little bit more later, but for now, let's just make these distributions big enough for us to see them. Now, so we have a little bit more detail, I'm also going to change the bin sizes or bin widths for our quizzes. Remember how to do this. I can go to the Tools menu, select the grabber, and when I click on a distribution or a histogram and drag to the left, the bins get bigger, and drag to the right, and the bins get smaller. Now, for Quiz 2, we actually already have the smallest bin width possible. If you look at the scale, we're going from 91 to 83, and in Quiz 1, 100 all the way down to 60. So, we can't have a bin width smaller than 1 here. 1 is the smallest unit of change in our actual data. Now that we have our histogram set up, let's see how Mary and John did on these different quizzes, specifically where they are in these distributions. To keep things clear, I'm going to minimize Quiz 2 right now and let's only focus our attention on Quiz 1. Let me click on Mary. Mary did a little bit below the average, and I see this because she's a little bit lower than about the center of the distribution. We don't have to be too specific here, but notice that she's pretty close to the middle. What about John? John is just a little bit above Mary, so also pretty close to the middle. If I switch back and forth between Mary and John just by hitting the up and down arrows, we can probably describe their locations as about the same in the distribution. Certainly John is a little bit above Mary, right? He has a little bit higher of a score, but they're both relatively near the center. I would say that Mary and John both did about average on quiz one. What about quiz two? Let me clear my selection. Remember, I can do that by clicking in the little triangle here. Let me minimize quiz one and instead open up quiz two. Where did Mary and John score in this distribution? Well, let me click on Mary. Mary is in the very top bin. She scored an 89, so actually the top score that's possible. John is at the very bottom of this distribution. So if I click back and forth, we would say on quiz two that Mary did exceptionally. She's at the very top of the distribution. John did very poorly. He was at the very bottom. So again, just describing their relative locations in the distribution, Mary did exceptionally and John did very poorly. Let me clear the selection again and expand quiz one so we can see both quizzes again. Now, many of you, I imagine, when I asked you to compare Mary and John's score overall, did an average of their two scores. Let me actually have Jump do this for us. I'm gonna make a new column by double clicking I'm going to double click column here and actually make a new name. I'll call it average. And to have Jump compute the average actually for every student in this distribution or in this data set, I'm going to right click that column and go to formula. Column formulas in Jump allow us to perform operations on values in other columns. For instance, suppose we want to make this average. That is, we take the sum of quiz one and quiz two divided by two. Now we can define this formula directly. I can simply click quiz one click plus, quiz two, divided by two. 
Now notice, this would not be the correct formula. Jump has interpreted my actions to mean quiz one plus quiz two over two. So we have to be careful what we do in this. Jump interprets our actions very specifically. Let me click clear and show you how we would actually do this. I'll click quiz one, click plus, quiz two, and now look in my little formula. Quiz two is currently selected. You can see because it has a little black outline. To divide both of these, that is the sum of quiz one and quiz two by the correct number, which is two, we simply click the outer box, then we click divide, and now we enter a value of two. Notice Jump interprets this correctly. That is, it'll do the operation quiz one plus quiz two first, and then divide that sum by two. If I click apply, Jump will actually create the averages for every individual. And we can see probably something many of you saw, which is that Mary and John, on average, if we average these raw scores, have the same average value. That is, in terms of the average of the raw scores, Mary and John did equivalently. But let's pause for a second and think of whether this makes sense. Notice we already saw on quiz one that Mary and John did about the same. That is, they were pretty close to the middle. But on quiz two, Mary did exceptionally and John did extremely poorly. That is, exceptionally badly. Do we think that the average of about the same plus exceptional is the same as about the same plus exceptionally bad? Probably not. If I was looking at these scores and interpreting them relative to the distributions, I would say that Mary deserved the better score than John. However, notice the raw scores know nothing about the distributions. And so the average of raw scores can't encapsulate any information about relative location. We'll come back to that point. Before we leave this average formula, I want to show you another way that we can define the average if we don't want to do it with the actual formula. Let me click clear, and what I'm going to do is scroll down on the right hand side to the statistical function group. Under here, I'm going to select the function of mean. Now mean is asking me to give it a column, or to give it multiple columns. In fact, to show multiple places to enter a column, I'm going to hit the comma key, and notice that it gives me two different places I can enter a mean. Let me select the first one, and I'll select quiz one, I'll select the second location or argument, and click quiz two, and this operation will actually define in Jump's mind the average or mean of quiz one and quiz two. I'll click apply and notice that nothing in the dataset changes. This is in essence the exact same formula. Let me click OK and leave the formula section. And let's remember what we had just observed before we calculated the average. We saw that if we looked at the locations of Mary and John, that is looking at quiz one, Mary and John scored about the same. If we look at their locations on quiz two, Mary did exceptionally and John did very poorly. Now our average couldn't encapsulate that information. Our average knows nothing about the relative locations of these students in the distributions. So when we take this average, it knows nothing about what the meaning is behind these numbers. We need to put in some way the numbers that we have into a space in which taking an average actually is meaningful. What I mean by this is, we need the numbers in quiz one to have the same meaning as the numbers in quiz two. And certainly they don't. Notice that an 83 in quiz one, which was John's score, is around the center. But an 84 in quiz two, a higher value, is actually way at the bottom of a distribution. So even the number of 83 and 84 has a different meaning in quiz one and quiz two. A better way to see this on the histograms is if we go to the topmost red triangle and select uniform scaling. I'm going to do one more thing. I'll go back to the tools, select the graver, and I'm going to drag the histogram to the right just so we have actual ability to see all the different bins. Now notice here on the same scale, we can see there's something very different about quiz one and quiz two. The first thing you might see is that the average of quiz two, the center, is probably a little bit different than the center of quiz one. But perhaps most noticeably, the variability of quiz two, that is how spread out the scores are, is considerably smaller than for quiz one. Now notice what implications this will have. A one unit change in quiz one is practically meaningless, right? The distribution is so spread out that a one unit change wouldn't lead us to say that somebody did much better or much worse. But a one unit change in quiz two is perhaps pretty considerable. A one unit change could be the difference of being at the center and being quite a bit above average. 
So what we need is some method to make scores or values on these very different quizzes comparable. And that is something called standardization.